This is Gary Atensa with CNTV, and today we're in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'm here with Sarah Hope Coaching. Since 2017, she has been your nature connected microdosing coach and shamanic guide, helping you create the life you knew you were meant to have. I'm joined here with Earth Medicine Mentor. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us here today. Hi, Gary. Let's start off a little bit about yourself. You were formally educated at the University of Colorado Springs in psychology and Spanish, really at the, around the turn of the century. Since then, you have gained multiple certifications as well as additional training in nature, meditation, and energy work. Really at the core of what you do has been teaching. I mean, for nearly a decade to students and now to adults as a coach. Share with me a little bit how this journey to nature coaching began for you. It started with my own healing. Really, I um, I love teaching. I love being a teacher, but I was a place of I was in a place of burnout. I was in chronic pain, chronic fatigue. I was experiencing just a overall just really inability to engage with life, and um, I knew that I needed to heal. I knew that I needed an alternative to the traditional you know, things that were available to me that didn't really seem like a healing path. Um, I didn't want to be on medication for the rest of my life. And yeah. so I, I healed myself. I started to work with shamans. Um, I started to learn about earth medicines and I took the time to heal. And never looked back, and here we are today, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. And that was my calling to help other people. Would you say that we have always lived in a world where not everything really is as, as it appears? Are people seeking the truth beyond what they're seeing or maybe being taught by the masses? Is that what you're kind of, is that what you're seeing now? Kind of people seeking truth, I see it everywhere. Yeah, absolutely, I think you nailed it. That's exactly right. It's that, um, you know, what we're given in the mainstream media or what we're taught in school, we don't always get the chance to use our intuition or read between the lines, but our ancestors were able to learn from nature. They were able to be observers. They were able to heal long before we had hos hospitals. And um, so that's exactly it, is just like becoming quiet, seeking that deeper truth, looking inward, and looking, you know, reading between the lines, looking in between what we're shown to find out really, yeah. you know, what definitely the people is. looking inward anymore and realizing, wait a minute, how do I, how do I perceive what they're talking about here? Yeah. Do you feel certain individuals are more drawn to nature than others? And is that an experience that you have had and you now help others kind of follow that call? Yeah, you know, I think my core philosophy is that we all are nature, you know, even in our homes, even even with the things that we're doing, we're, we're creatures of nature and everything in our home is of nature, but I think some people long to reconnect with nature, they have a deep sense that um, you know, there's something in nature that can be healing for them. There are medicines in nature that can be healing for them. And those tend to be the type of people that have that innate sense that they need to reconnect to themselves and to nature to actually feel that sense of wholeness and healing. I agree. I mean, I've sat down with many types of life coaches in the past, but never a nature-connected coach. Define what that means to you, because um, that's really the base of what you provide. So explain that kind of my viewers. Yeah. Um, well, to me, you know, I love teaching. I love coaching. I love helping people to, you know, realize some mm -hmm. sort of skill that makes their life better, um, that alters them in some way. And I had the good fortune of being able to go to actually um, an alternative counseling program that was Earth Connected. So I went to the Earth Based Institute and I studied many different ways, including neuropsychology. Um, working with you know working with parts work working with wilderness therapy and um i you know that type of study for me was really like what hit home it was it, it was soul connected work eye opening soul work yeah, yeah. and then i'm also you know I, I work with entheogens and earth medicines um and so that type of work when people are moving away from like a medical model therapy and more into self-connection, I can help them to bridge that gap. 
as we all know, there's a place for medical out there. There's a place for medicine out there, but it's become our first knee-jerk reaction, right. and it really, it really probably wasn't intended that way. You begin your journey answering, really answering the whisper of an invisible world. Why was the call of plant medicine, you think, a good fit for you? You know, I learned about plant medicine um, quite by accident about almost 20 years ago when I was a recent college grad and I was just tutoring people in Spanish, adult professionals, and there was this wonderful human who was um, a physician and he was studying plant medicine. He was studying um, power plants, plants that have been mm -hmm. used shamanically and ancestrally for centuries. And he shared this wisdom with me. And my father, my own father was a physician, a surgeon. And when this other physician shared this information with me, I, my mind was blown. I was like this, this is the thing that I've been looking for. And it just, it turned the lights on. And so I, you know, I went through the process of, of learning. When we get whispers like that, many times it turns out and we go, wait, we were right, I guess, after all. Yeah. I mean, that's really what it is. From medicine in the jungle to modern day blends, you have been there and done that. Yeah. Has your journey prior to turning to plants kind of a learning experience? I mean, you're training, but at the same time, you're experiencing a lot of this. Um, does that make it easy for you to, to kind of understand what people are thinking or maybe even fearful of going through that journey? Absolutely. You know, a lot of times your you know, physician can give you a medicine that they've never taken. And that's never the case with me. I'm guiding people through a process that I've taken the time to understand intimately. I've, um, as a Spanish speaker, I've worked with shamans and gotten to translate many ceremonies and gotten to go to different countries and learn from different shamans in different shamanic traditions and not to you know appropriate them and take those traditions but to take that level of learning and that style of healing into my own coaching practice has been utterly transformational you have learned from your own body as well as some great teachers mm -hmm. one of those services you now teach others about is microdosing. let's educate folks yeah. what is microdosing? Um, so microdosing can be all kinds of things but for the most part here in Colorado um, we have some earth medicines such as mushrooms, psilocybin, that is now legal. And um, this is a process in which people can take small amounts of medicine to start to heal and work with a coach, you know, to start to heal some of their trauma, to start to heal some of the issues that cause anxiety or chronic pain. And um, that's how I healed myself. That was one of the avenues of you know, healing for me. So now I can help others do the same. Interesting. I kind of look at it like a glass of wine. I mean, wine is great for you. It's good for you, but it can be abused as well if you do too much of it. And so, I mean, that's, that's interesting, that perception out there. I mean, microdosing can help us overcome many life's challenges like anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. self-critical thoughts, and so much more. Are these issues, would you say, more prevalent today than maybe even 20 years ago when you were kind of going through it? Absolutely. I mean, we are living in such a fast-paced world with so much pressure and so much information coming at us all the time. It can be really confusing. And then we're more and more disconnected from nature and, you know, that process of, of knowing that we're a part of nature, knowing we're a part of an ecosystem is missing for some people. So they lack context. You know, they lack that sense of grounded, like I know who I am and I know where I am. And then we also have trauma, you know, whether it's cultural burden, stress, um, feeling out of alignment with purpose, all of those things are increasing as is our population. And I really believe that the earth medicines are here to help us. Yeah, we're seeing it more and more every day, not only in adults, but even all the way down to youth that are experiencing some of this. Kind of tough to watch many times. I mean, I grew up in the 70s, and the term psychedelics was only used in recreational fun and really partying, not something used for healing or for benefits. Is that stigma, would you say, maybe changing, kind of like we've seen the stigma change with cannabis? I think so, absolutely. I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. You know, when we first came to understand the psychedelic medicines, they were there was this narrative that you could lose your mind or go crazy, and it, a lot of it came down to set and setting, and there were some people who used these medicines irresponsibly or abused them, um, and and did indeed, you know, have some lasting consequences. But really, that you know, there are medicines in the earth that have been used 
ancestrally for hundreds and hundreds of years in the way of healing trauma. Yeah. Um, and so when properly addressed in ceremony and you know through movement and through intention, when the sudden setting is safe, these medicines indeed can achieve their intended purpose the way that they did for you know for our ancestors. We need to dig a little bit deeper, educate ourselves a little bit more than mass media and what we see on TV and movies. Obviously, that's one of the reasons I love sitting down with people, maybe digging a little bit deeper in that. Are psychedelic services for everyone? And how do we know if they're for us? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think a lot of people really want to know because these, the, you know, there's more and more research coming out um, from major institutions saying that these experiences can be hugely healing. Um, but yet they don't really tell the whole picture. You know, sometimes they'll give a little clip of an experience and then they're like, oh, then the person is healed. Um, it's really a deeper process than that. You know, the healing of, the healing of trauma, um, the healing of anxiety, facing ourselves can be a really hard process. And it takes some time to prepare for an experience like that. So I usually recommend people prepare. You know, there are some health conditions that aren't right. People who are on a lot of psychi psychiatric medications, um, that can be counterindicated for a psychedelic yeah. ceremony. So I don't recommend that people just, you know, jump in with both feet, but take some caution, take some time to learn, hire a great coach, um, or hire a great, you know, um, therapist who's, who's very well informed in this area and just, you know, take some time. There's no need to hurry. Yeah. I mean, I think we as Americans, we, we don't like to hear that it takes time. We want a fast <laughs> fix on everything. Right. We're worse than many other countries out there that understand that it does take time. You have helped people navigate microdosing for many years. Yeah. Is this coaching done one-on-one? -on -one? Is it done in groups, in person, virtually, or all the above? All of the above. Yeah, um, I've helped people with my microdosing. I've also helped people through through larger journeys, um, through deep shamanic journeys, both in retreat settings. So I take people to Oaxaca once a year to work with teachers that I respect and have worked with. Um, I have done groups here where I do breath work and somatic work and ceremony work. Um, but most often I work with people one-on-one. -on -one, so I get to know somebody really deeply and get to know what's going on for them and then we work together through a process um, through a process of deep healing. I mean I would say most of us are so busy in our everyday life if there were a whisper from nature we would probably not even hear it as you were able to do. I mean why are retreats maybe a big part of what you provide? Retreats are amazing because we are able to take ourselves out of our daily lives and we're able to you know, go to a place where we can take the time to introspect, where we can take the time to look within. We can take the, you know, we're out of our everyday surroundings. Usually when I'm taking people on retreat, they're away from their phones, they're away from their computers, and they're deeply in a nature connected setting or a deep cultural setting. And such transformation can happen just within seven days, just by removing yourself from your environment and setting an intention and working with that intention. Stand there long enough to actually maybe put our cell phone down and take a selfie with nature. And that's the first thing we do, you know, right. for a couple minutes and then we're, we're off and running. Sarah, over two decades ago, what began really by coincidence was answering a call to plant medicine. Yeah. It took you years to risk the unknown. Um, you now guide others to take the leap that you have. Is this rewarding work for you? Oh, absolutely. I um, I mean, I, I wake up grateful every day. I love what I do. I love working with people. I, you know, I have a clear conscience about what I do because I know that I've helped people heal and thrive in their lives. And so I, I 100% absolutely love what I do. Excellent. Viewers, let's take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. What you're going to see is her website. On the website, you can see all the services she provides, um, events, classes, retreats are all explained right there on the website. And if you're a healer or maybe a therapist yourself looking to weave psychedelic or plant medicine work into your offerings, she too can mentor you. Um, read the great reviews right there online, then reach out today. Once again, that is Sarah Hope Coaching. If nature is calling, you should answer and create the life you were meant to have. This is Gary Atencio with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.